What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to growing your app downloads. And more importantly, and one that I really want to stress, is your revenue and hopefully retention goes along with that revenue as well. Today, I've got a phenomenal guest. He's all in the fitness industry. We took a look at his app on the app audits during the YouTube live streams. I've got to work with him. Super excited to have him because I was like, He's built a successful business in a very, you know, crowded fitness category, but really built a niche for himself through the kickboxing phase. We're going to learn about how do you work with influencers, email marketing strategies, what's worked and what doesn't, and how does he turn his passion? He's really passionate about kickboxing into an app and into a successful business and really investing in some of the high quality content he creates within the app itself. And I, you know, for me, Mike, I wouldn't, to go down this endeavor. I'm like, this is too complicated, too pricey, too much for me. But super excited to talk all about this with our guest, Mike Durst. He is Michael Durst. He is the co-founder of Oomph. Go check out the app Oomph in your app stores, O-O-M-P-H or Oomph.app. All of that is linked up into the show notes. Mike, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was nice to hear you do the intro live. I've been listening to the show for, you know, before we started working together and uh, your intros are always super energetic. So yeah, happy to be here and glad to, glad to be doing this with you. A friend of mine's like, Steve, your intros are super energetic and then just kind of goes down a little bit. <laughs> and then, you know, like you gotta find it where you gotta find a nice little balance between the two. It goes up and then it goes down. Yeah. Um, it's got a good flow. You got it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. All right, man. Let's talk about the Facebook strategy. What's working from that end? Sure. So uh, funny is on our Facebook page, we're not overly active. We, we, we haven't ventured into building an, uh, you know, an active audience on our Facebook page. And that's just based off, you know, manpower. We wanted to focus mainly on Instagram. Um, but Facebook ads is something that I've been, you know, diving into since we launched. So that's, that's something that I've been um, getting fairly good at and, and kind of understanding, you know, what's, what works and what doesn't. And, and um, the one thing I would, you know, for your audience to take as far as like a tactical step is to really just test your creatives and test, test your audiences and see, you know, what works. So if you're, you know, planning on launching a campaign, try like literally like 20 to 30 different creatives, um, different styles, different, you know, videos or stills, and then test those against four or five different ad sets with, you know, an audience based on interests, um, an audience based on the lookalike of your, you know, app installs or um, e-commerce, you know, website visits, and really do a lot of extensive testing to narrow down what ads, what audiences um, are, are really working for your brand. Um, I think that's the biggest piece of advice that I could give anyone is to really do that, that groundwork um, before just, you know, as opposed to, you know, making one or two ads and launching them and just hoping that they work. I think testing is a really big strategy because um, the ones that I always think are going to crush it never do well. And the ones that I think aren't going to do well always crush it. So you like your, my opinion I've found doesn't really matter if what matters is, you know, does it convert and does it work with the audiences that you're choosing? Um, so when we, you know, first launched, I think over the past year, we've created over 400 or 500 different ads that we've wow. tested. Um, and actually the last couple of months, there's been one ad that outperforms all of them and we still create and still test, but we haven't been able to beat that one ad. So that one's been running for a while. Um, but yeah, definitely testing um, different, different types of ads and creatives and audiences is, is a big tip. The, to get a little bit into the details of this, are you testing like dramatically look, different looking photos and videos or is it just around the same like oomph type of brand style and look you know we do a bit of both um obviously all of our videos do have a, a look and feel sort of but we've tested uh, user generated content we've tested videos that we've shot um, workout videos you know videos with text versus no text so you can go pretty granular on like what you know the different types of tests you can do but we we try to um, definitely test different types of creatives, even like user generated um, pictures where they like are looking with the app or, so, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those do better than you'd think. Um, so yeah, I, I think stylistically you want to stay true to your brand and how you want your brand to be represented. Um, but don't be afraid to test different things. When you're AB testing, when you said, Hey, launch with like 20 different ads, is that just within the Facebook ads platform? Like you AB test here, the 20 ads, you figure out Facebook, which one works the best? 
Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Facebook's algorithm is so good that it's, you know, the one, the other thing, uh, as far as like a practical tip is to let Facebook's algorithm do its magic. So, you know, when I first started, if an ad didn't perform well within the first day, I'd be like, oh, it's not working. And I turn it off. Um, but what I found is if you, if you leave a bunch of ads up within, let's say you create 10 ads and you have four different ad sets and you've got a different audience within each ad set and you test those 10 ads. So you've got 40 different ads running, let Facebook run those ads for, you know, a couple of days, like even seven days to, mm. before you start switching them off, unless there's something that's like super obvious. Um, but that's what I found. It takes Facebook a little bit of time. And when it does, it, it'll put the, the budget behind the ones that are working. So you yeah. don't really need to do anything. <laughs> I used to be more active, but it's kind of like check it and forget it. And then let Facebook run and see which ones it, it, it is showing to more people. Um, and those are your winners. So I actually barely will turn an ad off unless, unless I'm like, it's really not doing well. Is there a suggested budget that you have for these? Yeah, I mean, if if your budget is low, then you the the goal is just to test less ads. So if you can do like thirty bucks a day, um, you know, create five ads and put that behind three different ad sets, um, and and you'll see some some real results there. If you have a little bit more money, then yeah, you can go on a, a larger scale. You know, like if you don't have thirty bucks to test five ads, and like. What kind of business are you really trying to build? You know what I mean? Right. Like you have to invest right. a little bit to get, I, cause I talked to some people and it frustrates me so much. Like Steve, I spent it all. I have no more money. I spent it all on development. I'm like, dude, like how are you ever going to find product market fit? You know, growth hack, you can do all these other things, but you have to invest some marketing. Exactly. Dollars. I mean, I mean to me, even if you're able to say, okay, I'm going to put 300 bucks a month that, that, um, you know, I'm not the best at math or so whatever it is, 12 a day or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that, that amount will, you know, that'll give you some, at least some, uh, understanding of totally. the data and understanding of, you know, what, what's working and what's not working. And 300 bucks a month is something that I think, you know, you should be able to invest in, in yourself and in your business. Totally. I like it. All right. Are you doing anything from the like event optimization side on Facebook to make sure that you're getting people who are actually going to purchase a subscription, you know, you yep. doing anything on that side? Okay. No, absolutely. So as far as like, if you're in the app um, space, yeah. Event optimization has been really critical. Um, actually, I'll, I'll throw a couple of things into this one. Um, so one is, you know, initially uh, the strategy for us was getting a cost per install. So if you're first starting your real goal is, you know, cost per install because you don't really have the data to drive, you know, cost per trial or cost per purchase. Um, <clears throat> so trying to get that low cost per install so you can start building an audience. Once you have a bit of data, then you want to switch to, and this is just what's worked for us anyways, is, you know, switching to cost per trial. Um, so you can optimize for trials. So within Facebook, you can go into your um, campaign conversion and you can say, okay, I want it to optimize for uh, app trials. And that, that's been a really great strategy for us. Uh, right now, I think we're able to get, you know, I think our trial is uh, $4.50 per trial, which is pretty good. Wow. Um, and another great strategy, because th like you said, those are now qualified leads that you're getting that are actually taking action and Facebook will, will work. I mean, I'm not sure how iOS 14 will um, affect this, <laughs> but, you know, things may change very soon. Um, but, you know, optimizing for trials, optimize, uh, if you, we have a seven day free trial. Uh, within our app. So optimizing for purchases doesn't really make sense for us right now because it takes too long to see those results. So we, we do optimize for trials and then we optimize for purchases on our retargeting campaign. And I think that's another really big um, tip for anyone um, in the app business is a retargeting campaign actually drives revenue for, for us because what we do is we, we do a, um, a cost per trial campaign where most of our budget goes. And then about 10% to 15% of our budget goes to a retarget where we retarget people that have actually downloaded the app, started a trial, but didn't make a purchase. So those people, um, when they see the subscription page, they just click continue and they'll get charged right away. So you see real results really fast and uh, the return on investment on those campaigns are, is really, really good. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And I think the retargeting is another just crucial aspect to the whole Facebook ad strategy because you're, you're, you're hitting people that are now familiar with their, your brand. They, they've already shown interest and they're more likely to, uh, to convert to a sale.
So just to summarize, you're retargeting the people that have signed up for a trial, making sure they stay on and subscribe. Exactly. So there are people that have actually done the trial, but didn't buy, they canceled the trial. So we'll actually retarget those people and, um, uh, and get them. Yeah. And we'll optimize that campaign for purchases. Oh, interesting. That's really interesting. So do you have to wait the seven days that they no. cancel? No, okay. it's instant. Okay. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, basically whoever we're retargeting, they, they would have already been through the seven day free trial. Got it. Got yeah. it. Is yeah. that pretty easy to set up within Facebook? Yep. Okay. Yep. So what you do is you go in and you can uh, basically, when you're creating an audience, you can say, okay, for app, uh, app trials, and then you can exclude people that have made a purchase. So ah. when, you're, when you're, yeah, when you're setting up your, your audience, you can do that. And then these are just events that you put in within the Facebook SDK through your developer. Yeah. yeah. For your case, dad or uncle, right? <laughs> hey, yeah, tell yeah. Your <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is phenomenal. I love this stuff, man. I, I think this is such good stuff. Anything else you want to cover on Facebook? Um, no, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's good. Um, I think the retargeting thing has been big because that's something that I, I tested out recently or like two months ago. And I was like, holy crap, we're making sales, you know, and, and, you know, we're making profit right away as opposed to waiting for the seven days. So that's been a big one.